What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World. Back at y'all again with another video. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and make sure you click post notifications so you will be notified every time your boy drops some heat. Today, we are reacting to another scary video provided by MJV Animations. The link to that page will be in the description below. The name of this video we watching today is called Five True Fall Horror Stories Animated. Without further ado, let's jump right into this reaction video. Let's get it. I grew up in a small town. There weren't many attractions or places to go to and do stuff. So I was kind of starving for interesting things to do as a kid. One of the few things I found fun when I was little was our church's fall festival. The festival was very popular, as our church was the biggest one in town and all the families showed up to celebrate every year. That looks scary. I remember almost silly. always having a good time there. There were a bunch of prize games set up inside the church, and a bunch of activities to participate in outside. Like three-legged races and dunk tanks and that sort of thing. One year. When I was still pretty young, I went to the festival with my mom, dad, and little sister. I dressed up as Robin Hood, who was my favorite character at the time. The four of us all stayed together inside the church for a while playing the games. But since I'd played them all a few times before, I got bored not long into the evening. I wanted to go outside and run around, climb stuff, throw things. But my parents didn't want my little sister to go out and roughhouse with the older kids because she could get hurt, so we split up. My dad was about to go with me. But at that age, my sister always had a strong favorite between our parents that flip-flopped day to day. Whoever was her favorite basically always had to be in her sight or she would get upset. And that day, my dad was her favorite, so my mom went outside with me. It was an unusually hot evening for late October that year, and the humidity was crazy high. So it felt like it was 90 degrees up, even as up, the sun was up. setting. Y'all peep that? Y'all seen that? I know this ain't got nothing to do with the um the um scary reaction. And that day my dad was her favorite. But so look. my mom went outside with me. It was an unusually hot evening for late October that wow, year. My and the humidity was crazy. I know that's a hellcat back there. Look at that hellcat. Yeah. I'm tripping. I need to. I ah, watch so it felt like it was 90 degrees even as the sun was setting. That didn't stop me going full speed and full force at every physical activity they had, though. On the other hand, my mom was sensitive to heat, so she sat on the sidelines most of the time watching me play. After about 45 minutes of playing, my mom called me over and said she had to use the bathroom, so I needed to take a break and go with her. The church had set up a few porta potties outside since there was only one bathroom inside. The porta potties were about 50 feet from the activity area, far enough not to be smelled but still in view. I went into the porta potty next to the one my mom went into, but I finished up much quicker than her. My mom told me to wait until she was finished, so I stood outside until she was done. Unfortunately, she was starting to take a long time. I knocked on the door a couple times to ask if she was almost finished, but it was really loud outside with all the kids screaming. All I could make out on the other end was, I'm almost out, so I stayed put. More and more minutes passed, then eventually, I realized the sun had completely set. It was very dark, and I knew it would only get darker as the sun yeah, he, it got to be something mentally wrong with Buddy. So you telling me you going to just stand at the door that long? That long, bro? Shit. After Not I. Weaker, Not the I. festival area was lit up. <laughs> I but the porta potties only long. had a single dim lamp I shining got some help from Mama, making them feel isolated from everything else. Like, Mama, you good? My mom still hadn't gotten out, so I knocked again. It's this time she didn't respond at all. Yeah. 30 minutes That's later, when I would have walked been over from the door. festival area and asked if I needed help. Whatever I'm watching, that's what the ad gonna be. Hey, I'm gonna watch all your ads, bro. You feel me? Meet Clean My Mac, 
That's the least I can do. The least I can do is sit sit through your ads. The least I can do is watch your ads. Hurry up, hurry up, man. We trying to get back to you. I didn't recognize him from church, but I was worried about my mom. So I told him I thought she boy, what your eye looking like that for, boy? But blowing that gas. He was stuck in there. He smiled and told me everything was fine. He said he would take me to get my dad so he could help me get my mom out. I wasn't sure about going with him, so I knocked on the door loudly Wait, and asked my mom hell? if I could- Where your daddy at? So you telling me your, her husband was there that whole time and ain't think nothing was suspicious? He ain't think nothing was suspicious. You don't find that suspicious? Hey, you know, I tell you, you know, uh, black people, we make a lot of jokes. When we don't want to get scared, we just start climbing, you feel me? Right, my mom didn't the, respond. The Instead, the man quickly took my hand away from the door and gripped it tightly, looking down with an intense grin. Damn, I was clearly so calm. The kid looked so the calm. man said I shouldn't bother that nigga my mom since she was stuck and loud noises might scare her. At my naive age, this made sense to me on some level, yeah. but I still didn't think it was a good idea to go with the man. He, he saw the apprehension on my wrong. face and he tried to make sure. Yelling, he said he wouldn't leave the crap and that he would only go get straight to where my dad me, was. Boy. What would you think this was enough here, to boy. finally convince me. I say, get your hands we started on me, walking together while he kept such a tight grip on my hand what that it started to hurt. Dude. When I tried to wriggle out of it, he grabbed even tighter, so I stopped trying. Yeah. We headed toward the crowd at first, but then we veered left and headed toward the church. I knew that was where my dad was, but I didn't understand how the man could have known that too. Before I could think much about it, we turned away from the door and started yeah. walking behind the church, where a bunch of cars Come were parked on, in the grass. Boy. I was suddenly very All afraid. them people, you could have said the something, but you could have yelled. I what? tried again to get out of his grip, this time even digging my heels into the dirt, but it was no use. Man, say the something. man simply picked Use me up off mouth. my feet and held on to me. Trapping me in his arms. He must be dead. As my last resort, I screamed for help. He put his hand over my mouth, but I had already alerted several people from the church. Man, you should have did that. Running early, towards us bro. The man carrying me broke out into a sprint. He got to his truck and opened the door. I'm more mad at the kid than I am the man. Like, come on, bro. Make it make sense, dude. But just then, to be on your, somebody slammed the door on his fingers. <laughs> he screamed in pain and dropped me. I hit the ground hard and crawled away as fast as I could, while a small crowd of men from the church descended upon the man, forcing the door to stay shut in his fingers so he couldn't get away. He was interrogated by the men about what man, he was trying to do with me, beat his ass. but he wouldn't admit to anything. The sheriff was called to arrest him, but at some point, before they arrived, he managed to slip away. Everyone who saw his face confirmed that he was nobody from the church and probably wasn't even from town. He just drove in one day with the intention of kidnapping a young boy. He hasn't been seen in our town yeah, since, that's like for sure. You them to take As for you, my man, mom, you gotta, she had you gotta a medical open your mouth. in the porta potty and passed out. It was related to the well, heat and dehydration. Yeah, she had diarrhea, bro. I've been camping dozens of times in my life. I was a boy scout for several years. But my friends and I all quit to go camping on our own without the weird scoutmasters and annoying little kids. Fall was always our favorite time of the year for the weather. We had a pretty good system together, and we're quite experienced. Unfortunately, as we got older, life got in the way of things, and we had fewer and fewer opportunities to go camping. Eventually, we stopped altogether. Mm. One day, I decided to go camping by myself. I already had everything I needed and all the know-how. I packed up my car on a weekend in November and drove to one of my go-to spots. Just me or he looks I didn't spooky. bother making a reservation for a campsite because they were rarely ever patrolled. But I set up my tent and got a fire going under a light drizzle of rain. So I also put up a slanted tarp over the pit. After I made myself a quick sandwich, the rain went away completely, so I explored the area around the site. In the past, it was common for at least one site to be occupied by another camper, but they were always far enough away that it didn't matter. However, I was completely alone. I found it to be cool, but also disturbing. I had never gone camping alone before, 
And to not even have any neighbors was even weirder. But I went about my business. Yeah, you too. I, I sat around the that, fire. That's why I can't, I can't like do nothing like that by myself, bro. Imagine being out there and something happened and don't nobody know where you at. You know what I'm saying? Like, to even assist you. Like, nah, bro, I got to... I got to have, even if it's me live on the phone, like or something, somebody got to know where I'm at just in case something go wrong. You feel me, man? ...of the forest and enjoying the view of the colorful leaves, eating a bunch of food and sharpening sticks and spears. I ended up getting bored and tried to make my way into the woods as far as I could without getting lost. I was hoping to find something cool like a steam or a waterfall or a big rock, but I didn't have any luck. By the evening, I decided that camping alone sucked. I started wishing oh, that I had managed sad. to get at least home. one of my old friends to come with me. As darkness fell, all I could do was stare into the fire with nobody to talk to. I would've packed my shit It was more home. than just boring. It was eerie. Gradually, the sounds of the forest shifted from birds and bugs to just a lot more bugs, droning and clicking endlessly. The only sounds to break it up were the crackling of fire and the sound of my own breathing. Then I heard something else. Something strange. Oh, shit. There was a weird, quiet hissing somewhere. It was like a distant whisper. I thought at first that there was a burning log hissing, oh, but I turned all the logs around and the sound sick. persisted. I looked around, but it was too dark to see. My ears, however, picked up one detail. The sound wasn't coming from the fire. Hey, don't. It was coming from directly behind me at an unknown distance. I immediately grabbed my flashlight What's and light shined in the direction what? of the sound. There was nothing. I expected to see an animal or even a person, but there was nothing. As I peered into the woods, the hissing grew louder, but there was no sound of footsteps of any kind approaching. Oh hell no! She would have got out of there. A piercing scream rang out above me. A chill spread through my entire body. Yeah, I, I jumped to my there. feet and scattered light all around. It sounded like a woman had just been attacked nearby. But after a moment, I regained my composure. That scream was a sound I'd heard before. It wasn't a person. It was the uncanny human-like screech of a barred owl. It's a warning to other owls of a nearby predator. It's not a mating call. I'm over here getting spooked danger. for real. <laughs> I had no idea what the owl had warned me of, but after it screamed, the hissing stopped. I made sure my biggest knife was by my side and placed my chair on the opposite side of the oh, fire he so I could keep an he eye said, on the right direction. Now. I was no longer relaxing in the woods. I was on edge, watching, waiting for trouble. Got no fake teeth. I shouted <laughs> he got a big old times and made sure the tears. fire stayed big and bright. I continued to stay alert for nearly two hours until I got tired. By then, I was confident enough that whatever had scared me wouldn't be back, so I felt like it was okay he to sleep. High, bro. I crawled into my tent and got wrapped up in my sleeping bag, leaving the campfire smoldering. The moon rose above the trees and was shining directly overhead, casting shadows of branches and leaves in the canvas of my tent. I thought it was quite nice, but just then a cloud obscured the moon, snuffing them out. I imagined the shadows as I closed my eyes and tried to sleep. A minute later, and they're sleeping. the hissing Good, sound too, that boy was in the My eyes shot open, pit. but I remained perfectly still. The sound was growing louder, and this time, it was accompanied by footsteps. They were extremely quiet. I couldn't tell what it was, but it was getting closer. I carefully and I silently emerged from my me. sleeping bag and positioned myself at the entrance to my tent, ready to pop out at whatever it was. Soon, it sounded like it was right outside. It stopped, and I could finally hear what the sound was. It was a whisper. It was forming words in some kind of language I couldn't understand. Man. Then, the moon emerged from the cloud, casting the shadow of oh, the creature shit. on my tent. Boy, you got, uh, what's that boy name? What's that boy name? I, I ain't gonna say that. I'm keep that myself. Well, somebody out there got wigs, though. They don't look like wigs, my boy. I saw the shoulders and head of a man. It didn't appear to have any hair. Yeah. But there was what looked to be a mangled tree branch going through its head where its mouth would be. 
Human deer. <laughs> yes, it is. I ripped open the zipper of my tent and jumped out. I screamed as loud as I could and shined the light oh, at the creature. Shit. I raised my knife into the air. They finna show it and that shit finna spook me. Yet, there was nothing there. I looked around. Yeah, that boy nothing. hallucinating. I popped my head back into my tent. No shadow. A cold, sinking feeling of dread poured over me. Every hair on my body stood on end. Run, my fool. jaw tightened and I felt the urge to gag. I was on my own, but I wasn't alone. Without thinking for another second, I sprang into action, quickly gathering up all my belongings yeah, and slow. tossing them into he's my slow. car. Then I got in and drove away. I made it home safely, but still gripped by what I witnessed. I've told yeah. people about it before. But to this day, nobody has an explanation. Cause nobody and they all think I went you, crazy from isolation or just made it up. But I know it was real. I think it's the reason nobody camps there anymore. One thing's for sure. I will never go Man, camping I by myself I would out the tent with the switch on it. When I was little, I would stay with my grandmother for a week or two at a time each year. Sometime in October... My parents always went on a big vacation together for their anniversary, leaving me behind. I didn't mind. They, they about to go do some wrong folks stuff. They were neglectful and resentful parents. My grandma was a totally different story, however. I was always happy to spend time with her. She showed me how to cook, how to bake, played board games with me, taught me how to play wait, wait, a dozen wait, wait, different wait. card games, gave me great slide. books I to read. Too, I lit too she, many of y'all slide, time I, bro, with the cow. She teach you how to cook and how to bake. But y'all were putting that in the microwave. I don't try to fly past it. You were putting something in the microwave. Yeah. Acting like you done, done whipped something up. How to cook, how to bake. Look at that. Look at that. You don't bake in the microwave. You don't bake in the microwave. You bake in the stove played yeah. board games with me, taught me how to play a dozen different card games, gave me great books to read. Yeah, I be catching it. I be catching She showed it. me how to cook, how, how to, to bake, bake, played board games. Played game. board games. What are the rest of the the uh the things that supposed to go on the board? How y'all playing a board game with only one little um chess piece? Huh? That's why she looking confused. She like this, my baby's stupid. My baby is stupid. Girl, of course you're going to win when you're the only one who got a chess piece. Let me, st let me stop breaking the video down, man. We're going to let it slide. Games with me, taught me how to play a dozen different card games, gave me great books to read, and in general just showed me how to enjoy life. She lived in a small house with a huge backyard where she had a greenhouse, a vegetable garden, some old fruit trees, and a whole ecosystem of flowers. A plug out there, the centerpiece of the backyard was Tommy the Scarecrow. He was named after my grandfather, who had died before I got yeah, a chance Tommy to remember him. Tommy got that boy got in the movies, denim on. Scarecrows are cobbled Soup together made by of dapper out Dan. And straw. But in the world of scarecrows, Tommy was a distinguished gentleman. He was made of sheets and pillows, and Grandma always dressed him in Grandpa's nicest clothes. She spent a lot of time putting him together with a different outfit every few months, and tended to him like he was a living member of the garden. It might have seemed weird, but yeah, weird. I thought it was sweet. Nah, it wasn't nah, like weird. she actually thought the Scarecrow was her husband. She it was just a nice way of remembering him. Grandma would help him put him together shit. for the fall, and told me stories about him while we worked, so it was a good way for me to learn about him too. One year, while we were putting Tommy together in the backyard, I kept getting the feeling that I was being watched. A few times, I swore I could hear someone laughing at us. No. It was deep and scary sounding. I asked my grandma if she could hear it too, but she hey, said no. Hey, I'm low-key getting chills off a cartoon. It, because my grandma had said multiple times that her hearing wasn't as good as mine. When we were done, Tommy was dressed in one of Grandpa's nicest suits from when he still worked at his company. The suit was tailored to was 60. The cufflinks and get out of there, were gold boy. plated. The jacket and pants were stark black, letting them in the shimmering stripes stitched in the tie deal with shining fear. more. I deal. The fear. white shirt may have yellowed I over leave. the years, but Tommy was still sharp, and no crow would ever dare go near him. 
We spent the rest of the day inside as it had gotten cold. We ate a pot roast Grandma had been preparing and ate cookies together. Then we sat down with some hot cocoa and watched one of Grandma's favorite old movies. Then we went to bed. I fell asleep easily as I usually did at Grandma's house. But in the middle of the night, I woke up to noises in the backyard. I figured it was raccoons or something so I hoped they didn't damage Grandma's garden. But I didn't get up to check. Then, a few minutes later, a rock hit my window, causing me to jump out of my sheets. I huddled against the backboard of my bed, afraid somebody would break in. After a few seconds of silence, I calmed down and felt confident enough to check. The window faced the backyard. There was just enough light to make out the familiar shapes and notice what what should should be there. I immediately noticed that Tommy the Scarecrow was gone. Suddenly I fell off for a second while someone was trying to steal him. Tears of shame welled up in my eyes. I tried to keep myself from crying by burying my head in my hands. As I quietly cried, there was a knock on the window. Boy, I would have hot. I he would have tapped on my eyes Hold to up, see bro. Tommy stand. Tommy would have tapped on my window. I would have opened it up. Then I would have knocked the stuffing out of his ass. I would have just been wailing on him. I would have been punching him in the gut. All the all the little all the little stuff that they put inside of him. What you call that? Um. Uh. What you call it? Shit. Hey, I would have knocked the hay out of Billy. Boy, you got me messed up. You think I'm finna let you come over here and god dang have me scared to come see my granny? Boy, what? Boy, you got me messed up. <laughs> I screamed and backed away. Nah, Tommy I would have his scared eyes fixed on me, me and smiled as I made my way to the door. Before leaving the room, oh, she, I noticed she, Tommy's she suit was completely out of there too. The jacket and shirt were torn to shreds. The cufflinks and pins were gone. And the tie was wrapped around his neck like Somebody a already done beat his ass. That was me. See, everything I told y'all. Look, see what I'm saying? Noose. Blood poured out of his mouth, staining Somebody the silk shirt. Whoop, buddy. Completing the destruction of my grandfather's yeah, suit. Start I escaped start the bedroom and ran to window. wake up grandma. Throwing all I could say was stuff. that Tommy was moving around and looked all wrong. She doubted that was true, but got up to check the backyard with me to make sure. And why she standing? When she opened the back door, Tommy was standing in his usual oh. spot in the middle of the yard, his arms fully outstretched like always. Grandma tried to tell me everything was fine, but I could see more clearly than she could. The suit was still ruined, and there was something else wrong with him. I pointed it out to Grandma. Tommy wasn't hanging down from the post. He was standing on the ground with his own two feet. Just as Grandma realized something was wrong, Tommy's arms fell to his waist. <gasps> Grandma gasped, and Tommy began creeping toward us with short, slow hey, steps. Hey, don't spook. Grandma's <laughs> mouth was Holy She tried to say something in total disbelief. I hid behind her for safety. I said, hey, we're going to have to knock, we gonna have knock him out. We were frozen. Tommy stopped a few feet away. Then... He spoke my grandmother's name. Beatrice. Beat his ass. Thomas. I've come to take you with me. His words shot straight like through Freeza, me. Daddy. A moment later, Grandma collapsed to her knees, fell forward, and hit the ground face first, landing at the feet of Tommy the Scarecrow. Before I could understand what happened, he turned and ran away. Oh, I began hell, sobbing trying to wake my grandmother up, but I couldn't. I managed to call 911, but when the paid. ambulance arrived, she had already passed from a heart attack. Police concluded that it was related to a string of increasingly harsh pranks that had been happening the past few weeks, but they were never able to capture the person responsible for any of them. I often wonder what became of the stupid person who was responsible. What possesses somebody to destroy something a person deeply cares about? and then go so far as to pretend to be their lost lover back from the dead. I hope the guilt of what they've done haunts them for the rest of their life. Hey, I'm watching all your commercials too. Got to, you feel me? Gotta show some love. Gotta show the love. <laughs> MJV, you got some heat on your favorite page. always been my favorite time of year. The heat finally lets up, but it never gets freezing like in November or December. The leaves change colors and cover the ground. I get to celebrate my birthday and Halloween just a couple weeks apart, and September is finally over. When I was a kid, 
I had a neighborhood friend named Pete. He would come over every time my dad raked the leaves. My dad would rake them all into this big pile. We liked to push the pile under the big oak tree in the front yard and jump off onto it into the leaves, making sure between jumps to maintain the pile. We were usually the only I ones out in the To everyone else, it was too cold. But Pete and I were plenty warm from the activity. There was one house in the cul-de-sac, however, where the owner never the seemed in the house at all. I didn't even know what he looked like. My I'm dad said it was an old man trap, huh? and that he hadn't been the same since his wife died ten years ago. The man let the house in the yard fall into disrepair. The owner had a super old, rusty blue pickup truck parked in front of the house. Nobody ever saw him drive it, but every week or so, I could see that it had been moved very slightly. I figured he preferred to go out and get what he needed outside in the middle of the night, when nobody was watching. Pete and I played in my front yard with that man's house in full view at the time. It never amounted to anything until one year when I was 12 years old. Pete was over, and we were horsing around in the giant pile of leaves. After about an hour, we got tired and went inside for a break. When we went back out, my dad asked us to take my dog outside to use the bathroom, so we started playing with the dog afterwards. We stood at the edges of the pile and called her. She ran up, but as soon as she stepped foot into it, she froze. We tried calling her back in the playtime, but she was sniffing something that took all her focus. Then, she suddenly jumped out of the pile and started aggressively barking at me. Before we could heed her warning, oh, your boy an old man emerged from the center of the pile between us. We screamed in shock. The man reached out and pulled us up to his chest. We tried to get free, but the man was very strong. He was laughing and smiling, calling us his good old boys and holding on to us tightly. What a boat we interrogated him, him, him and made him tell us what he was doing. His response was chilling. He said he always loved to watch us play in my front yard from his house, which he pointed out to be the one in disrepair. He said this year he couldn't hold back his desire to play with us and be friends. I told him to never talk to me again. Then me and Pete headed inside. We told my dad what happened. But by then, the old man was already cowering in his house again. My dad said to call the police if the man ever showed up to our house again. I agreed wholeheartedly. That man was weird and smelled like piss. I never wanted to see him again. The rest of the night went fine. Pete and I stayed inside until his parents came to pick him up. The trouble started up again the next morning. It was a Monday, uh -oh. so I had to get up and go to school. When I left my house to walk to the bus stop, I made note that the creepy old man's truck was still in his driveway. I still felt weird about what happened, but I knew if I made it to school, I would stop thinking about it. I was about halfway to the bus stop when I heard the sound of a car coming up behind me. The sound of the engine was strange. It sounded like it was barely running. Plus, there didn't seem to be a muffler, a new so it was unreasonably loud. As it got closer to me, I heard the whine of worn-down brakes slowing down the car. I looked to my left as the old rusty blue pickup truck came into view and matched my speed. The old man was leaning over to roll down the passenger window, grinning wide. The blood from his nose had dried all over his mouth and chin, looking like charred skin against his pale face. He offered me a ride to school. I declined. To that, he made a weird, chummy face, suggesting the truth was that I wanted to skip school. If that were the case, then go home while no one was the wiser. Again, I declined. This made him frustrated. He got angry. He claimed that we would be perfect friends if I just got over my hang-ups. Then, he suddenly revved the engine and hopped the curb, cutting me off on the side of the world. He climbed over the seats and opened the passenger door, but I turned around and ran away before he could grab me. I heard the engine rev again, and tires squealing. I turned around, watching him revert back onto the road to point the truck at me. I kept running I'm as fast on the wrong as I could, side of the road, thinking I would have to run dude. between houses to not get captured or run go. over. Behind me, there was a loud chunk as he put the truck in first gear. Then, the engine roared for four or five seconds, burning rubber once again as he made a beeline for me. But then, luck shined upon me. There was a huge sound of an explosion. Immediately after, the engine sputtered and wheezed that before finally dying. He had pushed his crappy truck too far and it gave out. I laughed, <laughs> running home as I heard the man swearing his head off. When I was safe, I called the police. The man was found at his broken down truck, trying in vain to get it running again. 
he was arrested and his car was towed away. It is a... From that day on, I've never seen him since. I don't know what happened to him after he got arrested. His house still sits decaying in the cul-de-sac several years later, indifferent to whether or not he made it back home. I still can't believe how crazy that guy was. It's incredible what such extreme grief and isolation can do to a normal person over time. I hope I never end up like him. Hey. My girlfriend and I hey. have been having problems in our relationship for the past few weeks. In October, I tried to start being a better boyfriend by being more considerate and showing more physical affection. It seemed to help, but there was something missing. I asked her if there was anything else I could do. And she said I hadn't planned any dates for a long time. She was right. It's a wrap. So I looked she, around she, online she, she for fun dates. You see how I started looking at <laughs> See the chat dot, bro. Hey, it ain't nothing you can do. Used to do in the area. I, I knew my girlfriend was a big fan of fall. Side, and the month of October specifically. So I centered my search around that. I decided we'd go to a pumpkin patch to pick out a couple pumpkins and maybe a few squashes. Yeah, it's over with. You don't need, yeah, yeah. It's over with. That boy said, I'm going to take you on a pumpkin patch. A uh, pumpkin patch date. <laughs> I never. Uh, she was right. Face. So I looked around online for fun things to do in the area. Fun I things to do. I knew my girlfriend was a big fan of fall. And yeah. the month of October specifically. I don't know about pumpkin patch. So I centered my search around that. I decided we'd go to a pumpkin patch to pick out a couple pumpkins and maybe a few squashes. I remember that being yeah, a lot of fun as a kid, way. so I had a feeling it would help bring out some childlike wonder and warm memories. I floated the idea past my girlfriend and she jumped on it. The next day, I mean, she said, we were in the car oh, nice. with a bunch of baskets, <laughs> ready to take that pumpkin patch for everything it was worth. The farm was about a two hour drive from our apartment, but it wasn't bad. I could tell my girlfriend was very excited about the experience. On the way there, we passed by other pumpkin patches and apple orchards. I hadn't seen any of them on the map or noticed any advertisements for them. What we decided to keep our course to the one we originally planned to go to. Unfortunately, when we arrived, there was no nobody there. There was a big beautiful patch behind the fence. But a sign on the gate said the patch was closed for the week as See the that? entire family you, caught you, that the flu. I suggested out. we try one of the ones we saw earlier. Yeah, so we got back on the road and stopped at the first sign of another pumpkin patch. The wooden road was so old it was almost unreadable. However, the gate was wide open and there was no sign going to against the pumpkin trespassers. Patch, the so we drove down the cold. dirt driveway. At the end of the road stood an old leaning shack. The piled remnants of a barn lay about 30 feet away. There were no signs that there had been any activity there for many years. Thick, tall grass obscured the site from the highway, yeah. and tall fruit trees that boasted brightly said, colored no walls. My girlfriend got creeped out and wanted to leave, but I had a feeling that this place might be a diamond in the rough. Over a broken yeah. fence stood a field of more grass, you ain't even but it was much sparser than the rest of the property. I figured something else had to be growing there. I walked over and hopped the fence, discovering an expansive concealed pumpkin patch. Ever since the place had been apparently abandoned, the crops had grown wild. I called my girlfriend over and showed her the treasure. Her mood about the place changed instantly. For the next half hour, we quite literally frolicked through the wild field like children. For the first time in a while, I saw her smile with genuine joy. We filled our baskets quickly. There were lots of doves, so but nobody else. Basically, you two are to hit a lick with you. Boy, you slick, boy. You think you slick, my boy. That wasn't about no date. That wasn't about no date. You wanted her to go, yeah. For next for the pumpkin so y'all can get some money on. So I'm watching the you, spot. my boy. So we got the cream of the crop. It seemed like everything had gone perfectly. By then, the sun was setting quickly, so we wanted to get on our way home before it got to be too late. But when I tried to start the car, nothing happened. Confused and concerned, oh, I hopped shit. out and popped the hood to see if it was something I could fix. To my surprise, the battery was missing. The battery missing? I swore out of frustration. But that was the least of my worries. I knew I should be scared. Someone had done this while we were in the field. And I knew they were still around. 
but I tried to keep a brave face for my girlfriend. Just then, I looked up at my girlfriend who was sitting in the passenger seat. Right as the expression on her face turned to that of pure horror, I turned around and saw the figure of a man standing on the deck of the shack. In the last bit of daylight, I could see Oh, that's a stalking dude, too. Cause I, you know what? The first thing I be thinking, let me size you up. Let me size you up. So, from the looks of it, I give him, he about a good, um, we'll say 6'4", two, 270, a little on the stocky side, look like he was a linebacker back in the day. Yeah, bro, you ain't got no chance, my dude. Wearing denim overalls over a dingy shirt, he looked to be well you over gonna six feet tall. dirty, boy. And he was visibly angry. I immediately went to open the passenger door and pull my girlfriend out of the car oh, and let her down Boo -boo the dirt drive as we fly. Nah, yeah, it's over with. It's over with. When you when your girl don't feel safe with you, and you got shouted running. When y'all get wherever y'all going, it's over for you, boy. I'm trying to give you some game, boy. You better got that. Hey, when, when she leads you, yeah, you need to get in the gym. You need to get your weight up. First of all, you need to get you some fire. Because, you know what I'm saying, just in case you be put in this situation again because you want to go pumpkin patch dating. But here you take your girl on a goddamn pumpkin patch. And quickly engulfed us. We ran for two or three minutes, navigating by moonlight alone. Man, you got to open that. Run. I saw another figure of a man blocking our path. We stopped. This man was skinny, almost like a skeleton. Oh. We stopped. Man, I looked beat back. the brace, The path was empty, but I knew it was a trap. It was far too dark to be able to tell if the second man was armed. So going forward wasn't an option either. Desperate. I took my girlfriend's hand and bolted off the road into the grass. It was about five feet tall, incredibly dense and abrasive. I slouched down to keep my head from being seen over the grass. We stayed silent and listened for the sound of cars on the highway, but we struggled against the thick vegetation. For a minute, I was convinced we were lost. But then, my girlfriend stopped, peeked her head up over the grass, then ran in a random direction. I followed her, but as we neared what I hoped to be our exit, I heard footsteps pounding through the grass behind us. Damn, that Just nigga. before it seemed as though they he were about, about to catch, catch up, ass. we were dumped out into the ditch beside the highway. We quickly flagged down an oncoming car and piled in hectically, almost scaring the driver of the car into thinking we were trying to hijack them. We told him to step on it, sending us far away from that horrible place. When we finally relaxed, the driver asked us what we were doing at that farm. We said we were yeah, only stealing pumpkins, some pumpkins. But he revealed to us that the two brothers who owned the farm had died several years ago. Nobody went near it. Oh, to hell. this day. I wonder if what we saw were ghosts or something else. Maybe the brothers are still alive, luring victims into an open gate and silencing them. When we went back in the daytime to have our car towed, there was no sign of life, except for the fact that all the pumpkins we picked had been crushed. Hey man, shout out to you, bro. That was some good videos, man. MJV Animations, dope videos, man. Hey, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you stay tuned. Drop some comments down below if you like the reaction. And... Comment some videos you would like to see me react to. Without further ado, man, I'll catch y'all on the next one. We out this thing.